Hello, Assalamu alaikum viewers. This is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Lectures on Forensic Medicine. If you like my videos, subscribe my channel, share it, and press the bell button. Thank you very much. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. I am starting with the lecture number 10. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And in this lecture, I will be starting with the internal examination of the body. And the objectives of internal examination are to study and examine any disease process going on in the body, to see the damage to the heart tissues, bones, teeth, and other organs also. Any therapeutic, medical, or surgical intervention is noted, like repair or resection of any organ. and to study and examine the effects of natural diseases. That is the disease process and the effect of the therapy if it is, that is also noted. And any trauma, any trauma, it should be studied and examined. Then all the external injuries, they are correlated with the internal damage. So the organs involved with the extent and location of damage, fractures, collection of blood or any other fluid from the body cavities like abdomen, thorax or skull, it should be noted down. The opening of the body cavity should be done without interfering with the internal evidence in, in two stages basically, depending upon the case to case as to which cavity is to be opened first. That when we do the internal examination, the original injuries, they should not be disturbed. And secondly, as we have to open all the three cavities, depending upon the nature of the case, we decide which cavity is to open first. The abdomen and thorax, they are open together with one incision. Now talking about the autopsy incisions. There are primary or principal or basic autopsy incisions. These incisions are to get into the body and they are called primary autopsy incisions. And they are made first, then followed by secondary incisions, which may be primary for their own purpose. The primary incisions usually are incisions for the opening of the skull, that is from mastoid process, to the other mastoid across vertex. Then in CN for the opening of the neck is in V shaped. Whenever there is interference at the level of the neck, a V shape in CN is made at the neck. Then in CN for the chest and abdomen, either it is I shaped, straight in CN in midline, from chin to pubis, avoiding umbilicus. Then a Y-shaped incision, which extend from base of the ears, then extend downwards towards the midline to meet at the suprasternal notch, and thereby it follows down to the pubis in midline. Then modified Y-shaped incision, 
that is uh, starting from the shoulder tips going above the nipple or below the nipple that is modified when we'll discuss the opening of the cavities we'll discuss in detail so in cn for the opening the skull the primary incisions which are for the opening of the skull they are from one mastoid across the vertex to other mastoid called as mastoid to mastoid incision it incises scalp in the coronal plane and extend from one mastoid to the other over the vertex vertex the incision is carried through entire thickness of the scalp and not through the temporal muscles then in cn for the opening of the chest and abdomen the i shaped primary incision it extends from the chin to the pubic symphysis and is applied in the midline avoiding umbilicus and injury in this way that is you should avoid umbilicus or any other injury which comes in the way it is routinely used in practice and the advantage is that it is simple and convenient the another primary incision for opening the chest and abdomen either it is y shaped this extend obliquely downwards from the point 2 to 3 cm behind the ear lobule running forward to meet at the upper border of the manubrium sterni or the suprasternal notch then other a vertical incision being made in the course of the straight line that from ears to the manubrium sterni then from manubrium sterni a straight midline to the symphysis the advantages of this incision are this is preferred when the detailed study of the neck structure is required in the case of asphyxial death when the interference at the level of neck is suspected then the y shaped primary incision for opening the chest and abdomen this begins at the point near the acromial head of each clavicle that is the tip of the shoulder and it extends in a curve either above the nipple or below the breast on each side to meet at the xiphy sternum and then from this point it extend downward in the midline to the symphysis pubis the primary incision should extend through the skin and the soft tissues only now the second day top incisions the second day top incisions are cutting up the bones and aim basically to approach into the body cavities like the sawing of the skull for the cranial cavity cutting of the sternal plate for the thoracic cavity then the tertiary top incisions they are on the serous membranes of the cavities like the cutting of the membranes to open the brain cutting of the pleura to open the lungs and cutting of the peritoneum to open the abdomen so these are tertiary incisions which cut the membranes to enter into the cavities then quaternary incisions that at fourth level they are in the on performed on the viscera like on the heart to open the chambers on inside the lungs in inside the liver so these are quaternary incisions which are performed on the viscera 
an incision for the limbs, sometimes it is necessary to explore, explore the upper or the lower limb. And these incisions are circular or circumferential. It is given on uppermost part of the upper limb and at thigh in the lower limb, the part which is which remains hidden after stitching. So when they are stitched, it is not visible. After incision, the skin is degloved up and down, and after examination, the skin is again approximated and stitched. Thank you very much. This was about the incisions on the body cavity to reach into the body cavity. Take care, Allah, please. Thank you.